Listen to Me Marlon is a documentary based on the private audio tapes of Marlon Brando's own self-exploration using hypnosis and giving himself hypnotherapy. I'm a hypnotherapist and trainer, so I'll explain how Marlon Brando used hypnosis and worked with his own subconscious mind. Brando says, It took me a while to realize you've got to be your own analyst. Unless we look inwards, we will not ever be able to clearly see outwards. Listen to Me Marlon is not just for Brando fans. It's also an intimate case study of a man facing family issues as a son and as a father. Other personal issues including anger and self-esteem and a series of professional issues including perceptions of failure. This case study can help us understand our own issues and those of our healing clients. Listen to me, Marlon. These words are spoken by Marlon Brando to Marlon Brando. Marlon understood there are two Marlins, his conscious and his subconscious self. This is an insight we can share. Each of us has a subconscious mind that influences us in our conscious waking state. We can give it suggestions to tell it to improve. We can ask it questions and listen as it tells us the cause of our issues in a language of symbols and images. Now, hypnotherapy itself has two core aims. Firstly, we want to reconnect with and amplify subconscious skills. And secondly, we want to disconnect with or resolve subconscious blocks. Brando achieved high levels of personal success, but then like many, he redefined success to mean wholeness and peace. Brando says, It's been a struggle to preserve a sense of sanity and a sense of reality that is taken away from you by success. He describes himself as a troubled man beset with memories. Maybe he felt he was treated badly and that he's angry about the treatment. He's collecting bits of information here to try to explain why are you this way. He goes in search of his memory for answers and counts himself back in a hypnotic induction. Five, four, three. Now let your mind drift back to a time when you were very young. In Omaha and sit beneath that big elm tree with the wind blowing the light, the shadow of leaves. It's like a wonderful soft dream and that soft wind calling. That's a wind you can trust. You are the memories. You are the memories. This is a powerful suggestion. Don't just recall, relive, be there, inhabit that body in the senses. Feel it as if it is happening now. Brando is following an exact process that I teach in initial hypnosis. There's a quick induction, a deepener that accesses helpful states, gathering a gentle early memory, then moving on to significant memories that are causative to the presenting issues. Brando recalls his origins. My old man was tough. He was a bar fighter. He was a man with not much love in him. He used to slap me around, and for no good reason. I was truly intimidated by him at that time. My mother was a town drunk. I used to have to go get her out of jail. Memories even now that fill me with shame and anger. He recalls becoming an actor in New York City with Stella Adler. Brando says, I'd never done anything in life that anybody ever said I was good at. She put her hands on my shoulders and said, Don't worry, my boy. I've seen you, and the world is going to hear from you. So we have two classic, pivotal early memories. Adler becomes the new mother by putting her hand on his shoulder, giving a powerful suggestion to reconnect with and amplify his subconscious skills. The other memory he wants to disconnect from or resolve these subconscious blocks, which in this case are his conditioning from childhood from his actual parents. Brando established himself as an adult and an actor on the stage. He used his negative experience as something helpful to his acting, especially in the violent character of Stanley Kozlowski in A Streetcar Named Desire. Brando says, If I have a scene to play and I have to be angry, there must be within you trigger mechanisms that are spring-loaded, that are filled with contempt about something. I'd remember my father hitting my mother. In order to inhabit his character, he tapped into his own pain and repeated it. But he didn't resolve his pain. Brando says, When things are extremely painful to you, you don't want them in your consciousness. You want to forget about them. In real life, he repeated the patterns of his father, 
which would in turn damage and have tragic consequences for Brando's own son. Professionally, Brando represented a new school of acting. They valued realism, inhabiting the character, and bringing acting into its modern form. Actors who had long been like tradesmen now became artists. Brando disconnected from acting's limited past of just consciously saying lines. Instead, Brando connected with the deepest subconscious aspects of the character. He then became the youngest person to win the Academy Award for Best Actor, but he felt disappointed with his performance. Brando says, it had nothing to do with me. The audience does the work. They are doing the acting. Everybody feels like they are a failure. Everybody feels they could have been a contender. Inferiority. I've been very close to it all my life. Even the world's greatest actor can feel inferior. Brando sought solace in love and marriage. He reconnected with positive feelings from his youth of sleeping in the moonlight with his Asian governess. Brando married and had a child, Christian. The marriage lasted only a few months, but produced a son, Christian Devi. Brando says, I didn't want my father to get near Christian. I said to myself with tears in my eyes that my father will never come near that child because of the damage he did to me. Professionally, Brando wanted to make meaningful movies. He felt the director and the studio don't know how delicate it is to create an emotional impression. They cover up a sense of inadequacy by being very authoritative, commanding things. Like his father. The trigger mechanisms that were spring-loaded went off. Brando was accused of mutiny on the set of Mutiny on the Bounty and became the archetypal difficult actor. Brando said he never wanted to make another movie like that again. Instead, he joined the civil rights movement. He went to live in Tahiti, seeking a happier, less corrupted society. He married and had a child, a daughter. Professionally, he began to make artless movies for money, to buy free time, but in doing so he lost his reputation as an actor. He came back with The Godfather, supported by a young director and actors, but he felt other directors tried again to exploit his sensitivity and artistry in movies like Last Tango in Paris. And he felt betrayed by the way his behavior on Apocalypse Now was reported, once again pushing him into cynical money-making films and then withdrawal. Brando comes back to self-hypnosis and says... Let the tension flow out of you, going down in an aeroplane. You hear the Tahitian singing, far distant laughter, peace and love. Brando gets some relief by reconnecting with the positives. But to get a full therapeutic resolution, we need to connect with the negatives and go into the heart of the darkness of our key causative issues. Brando says, one time my old man was punching my mother. I said, if you hit her again, I am going to kill you. In 1990, when Brando was 64, his daughter told her brother Christian that she was being hit by her boyfriend. Christian confronted the boyfriend in Marlon's house, and in a fight while wrestling, his gun went off and he shot and killed the boyfriend. Christian was convicted of manslaughter and spent five years in prison. Brando recognized he had hurt his own son through his upbringing and his divorce. Brando says, Christian was burdened with emotional disorders and psychological disarray, the kind of trouble that I had in life. Brando says, I never tried to be like my father, but one inadvertently takes on the characteristics of one's parents. Brando says, I think that I perhaps failed as a father. I'm certain there are things I could have done differently had I known better at the time. This is a key realization that many people have during hypnotherapy, had I known better at the time. But for the longest time, most people blame others, don't deal with and therefore hold on to their own pain, and then are forced to repeat it and pass it on. But once we've lived long, we eventually face the need to ask for forgiveness ourselves for those that we've wronged. And by getting to this point, it makes it easier for us to forgive those that wronged us. We realize we are sorry. We did the best we could with what we knew at the time. And now we know in a way, so did they. Everyone did the best they could with what they knew. 
however little what they knew may have been. It's easier to forgive your father once you become a father yourself, or if you can learn to look fully through the eyes of another. The sooner we can do that in life, the better. Brando says, nobody is born evil. Most people are simply getting over bad emotional habits established in the first 10 years of their life. So the point of these audio tapes and of hypnosis and hypnotherapy is not relaxation or suggestion. It's understanding subconscious structures and eliciting inner wisdom to have realizations that allow deep therapeutic resolutions. Brando says, When my father died, I imagined that he was slump-shouldered, walking to the edge of eternity. He looked back and said, I did the best I could, kid. Finally, I forgave my father because I realized I was a sinner because of him. But he was a sinner because his mother left him when he was four. He didn't have a chance. Brando adds, Through introspection and the examination of my mind, I feel as though I'm coming closer to the common denominator of what it means to be human. Brando says, People go into a darkened room where they sit and they look at a crystalline screen upon which images move around and speak. And the reason they don't have light in the theater is because you are there with your fantasy. They will create things that are not there. Our conscious and subconscious minds can create many worlds of pain and pleasure, success and failure. Yet as we sit in our own darkness, it's all driven by our interpretation of the flickering light. The final happy ending of the movie of our life may be to fully discover our subconscious or superconscious mind that's beyond the drama and the events and the characters that is made up of inner wisdom and is pure, ceaseless, unwavering light. Brando goes back to hypnosis and says, Marlin, listen to my voice. Just let go. Just letting go. Drift. Drift like a cloud. Drift like a cloud in the sky. Drifting into that special state. The state of peace of the boy that you remember watching the elm leaves come down. Don't hang on to thoughts. Don't hang on to anything. This is the final realization, the end. Brando says, they're old tapes, put them aside. You have arrived. Your mind is becoming quieter and quieter. Bliss is coming over you. Now, until the next time. Hypnotherapy can naturally lead us into spiritual therapy. Going deep into memories of this life may lead us into memories of past lives. The realizations and wisdom we experience in this life or towards the end of this life may plant positive seeds for our future incarnations. Brando seems to sense this aware of a continuum of consciousness and a next time. Tell me in the comments, did you resonate with Listen to Me Marlin? Did it help you contemplate your family relationships and progress towards forgiveness sooner rather than later? Have you done hypnosis, hypnotherapy or age regression yourself? And did Listen to Me Marlin remind you of some of these hypnotic or regression experiences? So have you reconnected with past positive subconscious skills or reconnected with difficult, challenging events and being able to resolve them, or to feel a transcendent bliss, or in any form of altered state, have you reconnected with an inner transcendent bliss that has a therapeutic, healing, lasting effect? Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions on hypnosis or hypnotherapy based on anything that was raised in this video or anything that was omitted. Let me know and ask me in the comments. If you found this video too entertaining, check out my educational videos on YouTube or at my website, the Past Life Awakening Institute. I have foundation courses to learn about hypnosis, hypnotherapy, past lives, spirit releasement, and I have certification courses to gain experience in these fields and become qualified through extensive assignments and one-to-one -one video calls that we have taking you through every step of the process. If you're interested in online sessions in past life regression or spirit releasement therapy, check out my website, the Past Life Awakening Institute, to book an online session. Check out some of these other videos that cover past life regression, spirit releasement therapy, between lives therapy, hypnosis and hypnotherapy, all based on other spiritual movies.
Thanks so much for watching.